Yeah. So I'm asking about extensions. So Tanner, Tanner, what's your extension? A 409. It's real fine. <laughs> John, what's your extension? 407, made in heaven. Oh wow. Right. 405 with some <laughs> something <laughs> else on top. The 405. Sorry, it's cold outside. But at least you're already happily married. Yeah. Well, that you had a uh, light out on the trailer. Right? Yeah, I was gonna see if y'all could. It was it was bad, but I see this is out too. I'll, I'll heat yeah. that up, heat that back in the corner for y'all. And uh, do you have an NMEA cable? Name it. Yeah, Neiman. whatever you call it. <laughs> um, I'd like to hook that up to that. Oh, the motor? Yeah. You're gonna have you to have, have an interface. interface. Yeah. There'll be an engine interface. It's a cable that hooks to the motor, then to the NEMA. How much is that? Uh, we'd have to do some research on the Mercury's. They're a little, they're not as easy. As some of them gotta have junction boxes. Some of them don't. Some uh, this one you have to have. You have to have a data cable, a junction box, and a NEMA 2000 converter. <laughs> so it's about a. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh. <laughs> "Never mind." <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Three parts to, to make it work. These are more Move difficult. some batteries up here. From, from back here to up here somewhere? Yeah, just because it's so back. And now, what do you have in kind of storage you got up in here? Uh, I don't have anything in there or in this front. Oh, that's live oil. Got live oil here? Okay, so maybe. Are you wanting to do it here? I mean, we can do it up there if we can move them up there. Well, I was just trying to find. You're your, definitely gonna want to have access to. I don't ever to use them. Them. Yeah, you're gonna want to access to them for sure, and then we got to run wire. Yeah, the, up to it. So charger and everything. You want to move the charger and everything up here? Or where, what, whatever you think. As much stuff as I can get out of the back of the boat and other places. I mean, because I want to put power poles, but they're gonna be here for four weeks. All right, so people have been asking on our previous videos about these lights that we wear all around our necks all the time. They're not actually designed to be on your neck. Um, they're headlights, and they're really handy for uh, getting underneath dashes and stuff. You know, when you have to look up and you need your hands free. Blind you guys, sorry. Um, they're just really handy. They keep your hands free. It's better than holding a flashlight in your hand and trying to work a wrench with the other hand. Keeps both your hands free. This particular model is made by Snap-on. They come with a rechargeable battery. Uh, they use an Android uh, power plug to recharge. So just about anyone with an Android phone probably already has the plug they need to recharge them. They'll plug into any wall block, charge them up. When you need them, they're ready to go. I like them. I've got a, uh, one pair here at the shop and I keep a couple of pairs at home as well. I have a pair of uh, corn wheels and they're a little bit different design. They actually have two lights. You can turn, I mean, independently, you can turn off the lights off and on. Um, what I like about these over the snap on is they don't have the big battery pack in the back, a little, little lot, lot lighter. And then also, you don't have to have them both on, so they have a little more run time. Had to give it to him first because he doesn't able to get all the other stuff like you guys. He doesn't have a polo. You guys have like multiple. I thought they were special. I thought they got it for me because I like fishing shirts. Apparently they got it for me because it's the only thing in fucking big and tall on No, it's not. Society. But you're special to all. That's the other. I mean, really, you're special to all. I thought I got a fishing shirt because. We're getting sentimental here. Just getting sentimental, Brett. Let me. 
Yeah. Black out logo. But it does look it's my good. style. It's yeah. nice. Oh look, you, I think you even have the. Is that the other shirt underneath it? I do. You I'm wearing another need? one. I'm wearing my camo one underneath it. Yeah. You need some Chuck D's <laughs> on and a skateboard. Chuck D's. D's. You need some some Chuck. I some Chuck. Some Chuck, Chuck Taylors. The, were the Chuck D's in, the in the older generation? Oh, I thought hey, you were saying D. That's a good one, Chuck D's, because yeah. he yeah. chucks yeah. D's. <laughs> yes! That was yes. good. Yeah. That was really thick. Yeah. That was a good one. You that got you. Good one. That, was, yeah. that was, that was. trying to come back yep. yes. I'm not special. D's. I was just explaining how I'm not special yes. when I got my fat guy shirt. Yes. I haven't made a good joke like that in a while. This week we got a pretty cool boat. Uh, this is a Lund 1950 uh, stern drive boat, actually, not an outboard. This uh, guy wanted us to put a couple 12 live units on here and a ghost trolling motor, as well as a uh, Minn Kota Talon. So we can come up here to the front and start kind of at the front and work our way back. The guys up here just got done putting Lawrence Ghost 60 inch trolling motor on here, which we'll have hooked up to our 12 live that's gonna sit up here in the front corner. We don't have that mounted quite yet, but we'll have that sitting on a RMP Versa mount with a nine inch bar, kind of kick that screen up here. Come around here to the back and we'll have to look at the rest of it. All right, back here at the console, we've mounted another Lowrance uh, 12 HDS Live. Uh, sitting on one of our RMP Versa mounts. These mounts are pretty cool uh, because when you have tight spaces like this, a windshield and limited dash space gives you the ability to uh, set that graph back off, get it mounted down firm, uh, but it doesn't take up a really big footprint. Working our way around further back, we've got our Lawrence Point One antenna here, uh, which will uh, be nice for when he's marking waypoints. Uh, that's in pretty close proximity to our transducer, so it makes it a little bit more accurate when you're trying to mark waypoints. Having this closer to the transducer just gives you a little bit more accuracy there. Um, back here on the transom, we've got a three-in-one active imaging transducer mounted up here on the transom block. So, yeah. She's coming along. We still got some more work to do on her. We've got a uh, Minn Kota Talon that's going to come on the back here. Uh, this will be a pretty tricky installation because we've got a couple objects back here that we've got to dodge, like this ladder here. Um, we've also got to be able to through bolt that uh, to the transom. So just in front of that sits a live well. So that's going to be a tricky one. We're going to have a couple obstacles to get around and to make that happen. So that, that's our fun for the day. We got our uh, RMP version mount here. This is uh, the bracket that we're going to be using to mount our HDS 12 live up on front. Pretty cool uh, little bracket here. Comes with some nice instructions. They give you some pictures of your bolts to scale. So when you're going through your hardware pack, you start taking stuff out. You can scale it up to the picture, match that up, and know what goes where. We'll put this together really quick and get it sucked down to the front of the boat. testing our LUN that we were uh, taping yesterday. One thing that I wanted to kind of illustrate on this unit here is pretty typical of a side imaging transducer on a boat with a stern drive setup. And that 
that is in relation to the placement of the outdrive to the transducer that you have sitting beside it. You can see here on the port side of the screen, we're kind of wiped out here. Uh, I've got this boat completely trimmed down right now. So what I want to show you is, we can trim this motor up and get that drive out of view. And you can start to see right here as we're, we're trolling along here, we get that drive swung out of view just a little bit. Didn't even really have to trim it up that much. We're starting to get our picture back. In a bass boat application, we don't typically run into these issues because you're dealing with things like, you know, for one, the setback of a jack plate that, that kicks your motor back out of the way of the transducer. Mounting options on bass boats, you also have a lot of different options, really. You, you can mount underneath the uh, splash well. We've got jack plate L brackets that we can mount transducers on. We have a lot more options on a bass boat to get that transducer kind of in a clear sight. Um, so you can see here, even though we're in a stern drive application, it can still be done. It's just maneuvering your, your drive kind of out of the way of that uh, transducer to get that picture back. Okay, here we have the setback plate for our talon. And the reason we need this, this thing has a tilt bracket. Push this button down here, allows it to tilt for clearance like a, a you know, short garage door. Um, without this bracket, this thing would not be able to tilt the way we wanted it to. So we added this setback just to help it with the tilt. All right, guys, we're just wrapping this Lund up here. Rick and Meacham are over here doing some last minute wiring on the talon, getting that wrapped up. We still got a whole lot of work to do left on this boat. It's time for you guys to go get out of here. We'll see you on the next one.